following presentation is rated PG and may contain coarse language and mature themes. Viewer discretion is advised. No joke. I, I told my mom, I go, Mom, I'm doing The Tonight Show. She goes, who hosts that? I go, Jimmy Fallon. She goes, who's on? I'm like, your, your f***ing son. Are you nuts? Are you completely insane? My mom never talked to me like a kid. My mom talked to me like a roommate. I'd come out of my room, my mom be standing there with a cigarette in her mouth. I'm just like, we don't have any money. <laughs> Phone's getting shut off. I'm like, I'm four. I don't make any calls in this house. As a comedian, going from town to town is your life. In and out of hotels sounds exciting, but with only working an hour a night, the other 23 can feel like a sentence. So what do you do? Anything. I'm Nathan McIntosh, and this is Stand Up Downtime. Let's get up to get down. I want the lights on when we're gonna rock this town. This is Bruce McCullough, a man with too many credits to name. Actor, writer, director, kids in the hall. I guess I just named one. Uh, whenever I go to an improv show and I'm in the audience and they ask for a suggestion from the audience, I always scream out the same thing. Don't do any improv. <laughs> and of course, the first rule of improv is you have to say yes, so we don't have to see any fucking improv. <laughs> These are the Daves I know, I know. That's how I like to enter every building. I love that. <laughs> hey, Bruce. How are you? I'm great, man. Thank you so much for coming to meet me. Yes. Have you stayed here before? Probably 20 years ago. Um, my, my wife's from Kitchener. Okay. And her best friend, so they grew up here. So we were here uh, for a wedding. But it was um, the old Walper. I think there was, there was stains and things on the rug where there was rug. Mm -hmm. um, so it was kind of... Um, not a great hotel at that time. I mean, because it's supposed to have been here over 100 years. There's supposed to be a bunch of, uh, it's supposed to be semi-haunted. Yeah. Which, have you heard those stories? What does semi-haunted mean? Semi-haunted is like a ghost that kind of gets up sometimes. Like, like they set the Like alarm. it's on its, his round, Yeah. To, but he kind of doesn't get to it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's yeah. like, you know, sometimes you see housekeeping and they're, you see them in the hall with the big thing and they're just on their <laughs> phone. They're semi-cleaning. That's like a ghost. It's I understand. Like, yeah. You walk by and he lifts up his head and goes, boo, and you go, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Who's the person, like, in, in your life, yeah. have you ever met anybody that, like, completely intimidated you, that you, that you felt awkward around? Actually, Mick Jagger. I, when I, was, I was writing many years ago for a little show called Saturday Night Live. Tiny and, show. And I had written a thing, uh, I had helped on a thing, it wasn't my thing, The Liar, John Lovett's thing. Yeah, that's the ticket. And then I had to, I had to go into Mick Jagger and, and give him, essentially, line readings. And mm -hmm. um, that, was, that, well, that was sort of tough. Sure. Yeah. How was that interaction? Um, he was very serious. He was very, he was very <laughs> serious. I was probably scared, though. Yeah. 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 You brought up John Lovitz real quick. I heard a story about this man, mm -hmm. um, uh, that somebody ran into him in the West Village, right? Yeah. Um, and that they saw John Lovitz and they go, you're John Lovitz. And he goes, jealous. Is he the type of person to say something like that? Um, well, I think that's funny to say jealous. So funny. Um, I think he's pretty funny. Yeah, yeah he's yeah. so funny. Yeah. And he would make fun of everything if he wants. Yeah. Hey, you know who I saw that really actually um, blew my mind when I when I first went to LA, Billy Wilder. Oh yeah. Yeah, we went to the restaurant and I think we kind of went there because he apparently went there every Sunday night and he got him and his old wife. He was like it was a year before he died and his old, and they you know of course this is why I I moved away from Canada is the size of the martinis but they had martinis as big as their heads. Him and his old wife and then they had a second one and I was just so happy to just sit and watch. And I, and, but I wouldn't ever go over and go, Mr. Wilder, your movies are like, you know, what's your favorite? You know, yeah. I, so, but it was just nice to be up, up from afar and um, look at him drink two jumbo martinis. He'd probably be, he'd answer your, he'd, he'd love to talk to you. I, if I went over, they'd be like, can you please, we're gonna have you Well, he wouldn't, he wouldn't have known who I was, I don't think. Um, but you mean as a peasant, he might say, I don't think so. I don't know, I wouldn't, I don't know if I'd go but over. You'd be like, I, I've directed. Yeah. He's like, please leave me alone. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I go over like this. <laughs> Your martini is out of frame, yeah, yes, sir. Yeah. Truthfully about me, I actually married a little K-Town girl. A funny little fact about her, more interestingly, is that she played Nancy Drew 
in the short-lived series of the 90s. And I just love this little fact. Because, for example, if ever she, say, loses her car keys, <laughs> why can't you find them? Aren't you f***ing Nancy Drew? <laughs> I've even got the children doing it. In the world of uh, what, we're, what we're doing, Comedy. what is it we're doing? Comedy. Comedy. Yep. I mean, uh, acted, directed, written. Is there any one of those things that you like, like more than the other, or are you a fan of every single one of them? Um, well, I, I actually like, you know, I spent many years in, in Los Angeles and got sort of frustrated there because I did a lot of writing. I would go and pitch something to ABC or NBC and they'd say, yeah, we want to buy it. Go, wow, we just, wow, there's my money for the year. And then cut to, oh, we're not making that one. We just bought, we just bought 50 of them, we're only making two. Um, so writing kind of had a bad vibe for me for a while. I think whenever I've gotten exhausted in my life, like directing, whatever, Performing is always the thing that sort of recharged me. Mm -hmm. So in a way, per performing, it's what I started doing. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like a football player, like a high school football player. He, he gets into it in the beginning because he loves the feel of throwing the ball and, and the grass and catching it. And then as they get on, it all becomes about grid systems and trying to read the defense. So the mm -hmm. fun of it goes away. So for me, the throwing the ball is just going on stage and saying something weird and somebody laughs or doing a, a one-man show. So. Um, Performing my stuff and communicating with an audience, even at 100 years old, at Billy Wilder age, um, is, is fantastic. I mean, being from Alberta, you're an LA guy. You yeah. liked the... They felt similar to me somehow, and I don't know why. Maybe it's the warehouses or, or something. Uh -huh. Or maybe because... Driving, people, you have to drive everyone. You have to drive. People want to kick my head in. Maybe that's every <laughs> Um But no, I, I liked LA. You know, I remember when we first started going there, the first time we went there with, with the kids in the hall, and I remember Dave Foley, we were playing at the Roxy. And Dave Foley said, we're all moving here, you know. And I said, F you, we're never moving here. You know, and, and, and we never talked about LA as a possibility. And so I was really stubborn. I didn't want to go to LA because other people were going and I, I could be in Canada. And I realized that Canada has a really complicated <laughs> relationship with people who have done a show. Yes. They don't want to ask you to do another one because you already had your turn. But in LA, people are offering you stuff and they've never met you. So, and then I went there, I actually felt kind of free. I sort of enjoyed being there in a weird little house and trying to reinvent myself and buying a kettle at the thrift store. And I think when people first go there, and it, it can F them up a little bit sometimes because people are so nice. Yeah. They go there and they go, wow, I met so many people. I mean, so many things are going to happen. And then they don't end up happening. In Canada, they're kind of like, oh, okay, well, it was nice to meet you. And then they want to do your thing. Mm -hmm. So lead, they lead with energy, which you don't understand for a little while. So for I would, I would always sort of meet with comedians or whatever, writers who come up and I would say, okay, it's gonna seem like, be positive, but it's a different thing. So mm -hmm. don't, don't necessarily trust their enthusiasm. Do you have any kind of like travel rituals? Um, Cause I mean, you travel a lot. I always like to know, you know, what, what, do, what do you do? For me, when I'm on the road, as we are, um, even though I'm only an hour and a half from my house, um, Fitness is the battle mm -hmm. to get to be a to be a real person and not just be in front of the TV watching you know Doctor Pimple Popper, which is I can't I knew, believe that's a show. It actually is more like when I was a young man and I would be able to just go to a coffee shop and write my ideas down. And now I can't because I'm always working and I have two children and so I'm always busy carrying things and moving things around. I get to kind of connect with sort of this more free flowing soul mm -hmm. that I was when I was younger because now I'm just you know uh, bridled with responsibility yeah so I think I think it's exercise if you're live tweeting tonight's show please say I strode out like a young William Shatner <laughs> actually I've been living in America up until a little while ago and it's so funny in America right they're always talking about well, how great it is to be an American in Canada we don't do that because we get to wake up here we don't have to Right? What's your worst story of turbulence? Like, what's the worst turbulence you've ever had to deal with? Um, I actually had a pretty bad turbulence. And I, um, going, we flew for some reason to Medicine Hat about two months ago. <laughs> I was with Kathy Jones. We were doing some shows. And it was one of those things like, really? Are we flying somewhere we could actually drive in two hours? Okay. And then we were in a plane that didn't have any windows. Okay. And it was... Oh, wow, good. I have a I have a window seat or I have an aisle seat. Oh, it's the same seat. It's the There's eight. only one. There was 12. Yeah. It was a 12 seater. And it was snowing and they didn't know if they could land, but it did feel like like we were dropped 
like a hockey puck, mm -hmm. you know, uh, from the sky at one point, and it was just, I just, I just thought, okay, I really, are they going to take out me and Kathy Jones? Yeah, that that feels a bit like in a Canada. Story. In Canada, yes, of course, <laughs> going to Medicine Hat. You know, I don't know how we'd only sold like 60, 70 percent. It wasn't sold out. It's like. No. So Somebody would have wrote that too in Canada. Uh, two Canadian heroes taken down on their way to a half-filled. <laughs> <laughs> they would actually lead with that. Yeah. that we half couldn't actually theater. fill a theater. It was gonna be. It was gonna be a a, a, a train wreck anyway. Yeah. It happened to be a plane crash. Yeah. Yeah, I always wonder that just because uh, obviously people fly in so much. Like people that fly a couple times a year, you might deal with some kind of turbulence. But people fly all the time. Like I wonder, like a guy like uh, I don't know, man, Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart almost once a week must have a right. plane that probably feels like it's going to explode. Yeah. So there's those private jets? Right. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, one time we were coming, with Kids in the Hall, we were coming from uh, Vancouver to play Calgary. And we were in a mudslide. Okay. And then the other, then George Thorogood's band was also in the mudslide, so we got to play Frisbee with them. But I'm, all, I'm always like the guy on the tour who's like, okay, how do we, how do we get to the show? How do we get to the show? And so <laughs> it was so fun in a way because I'm so evil. But Scott Thompson. <laughs> He, 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 he's f***ed up for days if he has to fly. <laughs> and so we figured out the, the way to get to the show was to get um, an army helicopter that someone, oh, wow. was, someone was going to get us um, from the, the Canadian Army to get us over the mountains to the show. It was going to, I think it was still going to cost us like $12,000, but wow. that was better than not doing the show. And so Kevin and I said, we've got to get Scott onto a helicopter. And he laughed his head off because getting Scott into the helicopter would be the hardest thing in the world. And I said, okay, I'm going to do the, speaking of director, I'm just going to do the long shot now. I'm going to let you go. And I just saw Kevin in the distance. It was so funny. Just Kevin in the distance, like talking to him. And then he went, ah, and you just saw him explode and come down. And, like that. and then he was going to do it. And we never ended up doing it for some reason. Oh, weird. I think I think we thought the other solution was we'd just do the show late, which we did. Well, George Thorogood probably went back into his, his second uh, bad to the bone. And you're like, we can't get on the helicopter yeah. this man's playing it again. <laughs> He's playing bad. Well, I can't miss bad to the bone. Or is that, is that sort of an ominous way to... George Thorogood was, was playing as they died that night. Again, another Canadian tragedy. Yeah. But we did had sold out that show, so they might not have written an article about us. I love that the Canadian Army just has a helicopter floating around for, to <laughs> no, be rented. It, it was a phone and a call and a phone call and a big The Prime string. Minister, who do you call to get a Canadian helicopter? Well, you're getting someone out of bed, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Red phone rings. Yeah, yeah. We need the chopper. He's like, what's going on, Kuwait? And they go, no, kids in the hall. Yeah. They go, all right, we can put it there. What? Is that kind of show? <laughs> all of them? Yeah. That'd be the thing. Is it just a couple of them or, or everybody? It, or as they say now, is it the original members? As they said to me last night, the original, he's one of the original, <laughs> what? Is there another kid in the hall? You didn't hear about the kids in the hall group? Like the Blue Man group, they hire a couple of people to travel I around? I wish we could do that. Had, had, you we could. Done, had we done the blue face thing early yes. on, then we could have replicated ourselves quite easily. <laughs> I did a show in Prince George, BC, and it was like, yeah. oh, we have a couple openers. It's like, oh, okay, who are they? Oh, and they won't go long, because you told them, like, very short, like seven minutes or something. And, like, the first guy does, like, 25 uh. minutes. And then the second guy went out, and I was like, mm. It's like, this is, like, almost 40 minutes. And it was a lot of, like, so what else? What else did I want to say? Anybody who's on a show um, and they're told seven minutes, yeah. right? Especially, especially when yeah. somebody like you that's closing the show. Yeah. And they do 25. That person should be kicked out of yeah. business. Am I wrong? Well, and especially because afterwards he came out and he said, wow, that was amazing. I've never done that long of a set oh. before. It's like... Kicked out of the business. Should be thrown out of the business. Bl blackballed. Well, not, maybe just take him in a little truck. Yeah. A little blindfold around his eyes. And then what happens in Prince George? Stays in Prince George. They take you to like a, a like a, a, a I don't know a gravel pit yeah. or a, some other hard job, and they go, hey man, um, you're gonna do 25 minutes in here. Yeah. How's that feel? <laughs> and they get a dig, and you go, God, I'll never go over my time again. Because I mean, it's a real flagrant thing, especially yeah. to come up to you and be like, I've never done that long before. Yeah, you weren't supposed to yeah, do it tonight. Just up my show. Yeah. You think you're ever gonna get on a Prince George? I doubt That's it. That's on his resume. I <laughs> up Bruce McCullough's show. <laughs> One time, someone was waving at me. I thought they recognized me from my silly skit show, but it turns out they were just drowning. <laughs> it's kind of a s sad one, really, you know. My pen, my pen. Oh, you want an autograph? No, my EpiPen. I'm fucking dying. <laughs> Another thing about me, you know, I'm not so religious. Whenever I walk into a church, all I can ever think is, wow, what a great apartment this would make. Have you ever met anybody that's like, uh, and obviously, no names. Yeah. You ever had an interaction with somebody that you were like, I really hate this person and I have to work with them? Oh, all the time. Yeah. All the time. Um, more as a young man, now I go, look, oh, is that about me? 
But I, I, I do, I, I used to often do that and it was more about me. I think now I just realize people are all on a certain kind of scale of abilities and I, I work well with people like you who are like this and there's a certain kind of person that I don't do well with. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, braggarts maybe. I yes. remember we had a director once who was, we were doing some promos and after every take he'd high five the whole crew and it's like, is this, and it was like, it seems like he's a man vet having flashbacks. It was so weird. Mm -hmm. And it was all this enthusiasm and it just, and maybe that's a Canadian thing. Sir, your enthusiasm is shutting me down. Yes, yeah. yes. You're going way too big, way too yeah. way too far for whatever we're doing right now. Yeah. I say to my girlfriend every once in a while, I, I judge people pretty quickly. Yeah. She takes months, years. I'll say like, uh, I'll meet somebody and she'll be like, what do you think of them? I go, they're human garbage. Right. I'm sorry, I, I talked to them, I looked them in the face. I'm like, they're garbage people. She's like, you gotta give them a chance. I go, I did. We sat for five minutes, right. uh, we talked, and I know now that I don't want to get to know this person yeah. ever again. Well, as my real estate agent used to say, there's a buyer for every house. Uh, well, what, what's it, flip this house? <laughs> this house. Yeah. That's what it, I say. That's gonna be your show. <laughs> this house. <laughs> this show. Get that show. <laughs> You'll <laughs> this yeah. house, and well, I just walk out. Why don't we just renovate a show? That's what we'll do, we'll renovate a, a place, uh -huh. flip it, make a little money, and talk about the business at the same time. <laughs> Right? That would be great. Flip and flop, because we flip. talked about how we, oh, there's already that show, but we talked about how we didn't have good shows. Uh-huh. Oh my God. As we're tearing a house down. Yeah. yeah. We're talking about, man, this is this is worse yeah. than last night's yeah. Yeah. Prince George yeah. guy running the light, taking cabinets off of walls. Yeah, this wall is tough, but probably growing up in Calgary and being called a was tough, even tougher. What do you want to name the show again? You said that flip and flop is flip, already done. Yeah. Um, flip and, flip and work because of the times. <laughs> Flippin' <laughs> is pretty good though. Yeah. Flippin' if it's on the internet, even on the internet you can't do that. No, oh, the internet's now worse, become, yeah. uh, you think it's a safe place. You'd have yeah. to do it on the dark web. Do you want to yeah. do a show on the dark web? <laughs> There's somebody, right well, there. we have I've, ads for her. <laughs> As I've said to the kids in the hall a thousand times in my life, well, I don't smell money. <laughs> <laughs> it's a show, we flip houses, ads are run by people that sell kids in cages, <laughs> AK-47s that you're not allowed but to But we do some good rentals on shows. Oh my God, We're, all these houses are gonna be absolutely gorgeous and people are gonna get an inside look at at uh, the comedy business. Good, let's do that. We should probably get going. Okay, so great to sit with you. Yeah, yeah, so uh, thanks for coming down. Yeah. You gonna pay for this? Uh, we're just gonna so go. So there's no money to exchange? No, we're just gonna go. Okay. Nobody's even gonna Donnie and Dashing yeah, for the quiet case. Hopefully nobody cares. <laughs> I'm getting older now. I'm starting to check out the weather in other cities. I'm not going there, but for some reason I really need to know. I'm getting older now, you know, starting to appreciate golf. It's the only sport where the players look exactly like the fans. I'm getting older now. There's a trick I've been doing since my, you know, mid thirties, but you er, hipsters can adopt it any time. In the middle of the day, I change my socks as a little pick me up. It's not a joke, I actually do it. Sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night and it's only 11. <laughs>